What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Hayes Demon Show. And today we are going to be going over the tier list for Mystical. I know you guys have been waiting on this ever since we put out the neutral tier list. We also put out a adventure tier list as a second one and we're rolling into our third part of the series so if you haven't checked out those videos make sure to go see what you think or what i think about the cards and how they rank in the tiers but just to let everybody know that the way that i look at these cards i have been in legendary at a somewhat top tier close to the top tier you know of legendary for the majority of over a year and a half now so i've played with a lot of these cards and some of these cards have gotten buffs over time nerfs yada 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 so they can change where they are luckily these are some up-to-date tier lists for you guys and uh the way that i uh grade these cards is based on how well the card can do on its own without any support because the more support a card needs the more of a liability the card is and the less likely that the potential, the maximum potential value of the card is earned. You know what I'm saying, okay? So, also another thing to keep in mind is that the other tier lists, you can't really compare cards. We say, why does this card on this part of the list, but then this card's on this part of the list on a different one? Because these are in their own tiers for a reason so that way you can compare between uh each card's strengths in its own theme right all right so without further ado let's go ahead and carry on into this we're going to be doing these in alphabetical order and then i will go over whatever i can as we go through it the pros and cons of cards and their long-term value so first we have angel wendy who is going to be in the E category. This card is a common ranged 3 cost unit within a charged ability heal H uh, a certain amount of HP. The HP scales on level, so it will raise up as you level her up. But the three closest units, so if she goes to use her ability and they walk out of her range, they will not get healed, I do believe is how it works. Uh, the heal is not very strong. She's a common card, so her attack and her health do not scale into the late game. So I have put her at E. She is not absolutely useless as she's a ranged unit and she has a heal, so she has a purpose. We're going to have her sitting in the E category, just above, below, <laughs> just above the F category, right? Mm-hmm. Next on the list, we have Choir Boy Butters, which we have at the C plus category. This assassin is an epic class. For two cost energy, his death wish gives you just a little bit extra energy. It's not a really uh, battle changing effect, you know, so it, he doesn't really get so much higher on the list. The, the little bit of extra energy does help. I mean, you use them over the course of the whole game. You could add up to maybe one whole extra energy, potentially, right? Uh, two costs, but he has very good attack and very good health for a assassin. One of the best ones, able to kill level 6 Duggies in one shot if he is a level 5. He's only ranked C+, plus because there is one better assassin than him, which we will go over here in a little bit. Up next, we have the Cupid Cartman, who is a rare, ranged, 3 cost. He has no ability except that he is a flying unit. He is flying, cute, speedy, and annoyingly romantic. This card does not have very good attack, and he does not have very good health. So he's kind of more of a little bit of a bugger to say. Uh, he has a funny effect that he can be knocked back farther than a lot of other units. And also that he can be played at the same time as another Cartman. You can have Zen Cartman, Osimo, Grand Wizard Cartman, Sheriff Cartman, whichever. You can run two Cartmans at the same time if you're running this one. But his stats 
and the fact that he doesn't actually have an ability make him not very viable overall. He can do some work, but it's just his attack really doesn't come pull through for him. I don't think so. So he ends up in the D category. He's a little bit better than Angel Wendy just because he's a rare and he is a flying unit. So he has a little bit more of an advantage than her. Up next we have Energy Staff, which is in the B category. This card is an absolute game changer if used in the last minute or overtime. It can absolutely change the uh, how much energy you're gaining. Let's see here. It's a, uh, a totem, four cost, rare, with the increase of the speed that you gain energy. Now, if you use this card in the first two minutes of the game, it's not going to do really a whole lot except that it allows your opponent to push to your side, which whenever you're fighting on your side of the battlefield, you can gain advantage very easily, right? So that's kind of like an, a passive aggressive card. And then in the late game, combined with another card, which we have, it will be Hermes Kinney. Combined with him, this energy staff gives you so much overwhelming energy that you can just kind of outdo your opponent very easily outplay them indeed uh the card is only in the b category just because it doesn't actually do anything directly on the battlefield so it does require support of you having good cards to win the battle because otherwise you're still going to lose the game even if you have extra energy it can be killed with a dwarf king clyde lightning bolt or hook hand clyde anything like that of the sort uh, hit with arrow storm so it's potential to also be killed uh potentially for free also uh, in a sense a free way of killing it so that your opponent can't get the energy from it is kind of also a negative but overall the card is a very good passive aggressive and highly dangerous card if left unchecked we have next is Friar Pop Jimmy, which we have in the E category. He is not a very good card in that he is a common fighter. Three cost with an aura regenerates health on nearby allies. So his aura has an okay area. Maybe it needs to be a lot bigger of an aura. Maybe it would help be a good buff for him. Um, but his attack and his health do not scale into the late game as... He is just a common card, and like I said, his aura is not very strong. So he can be easily taken out of a battle and his effect not really doing much. Of course, in combination with maybe a Priest Maxi or Regeneration, the card can do better. But overall, the card by itself is not very good, and it relies on healing other cards anyway. And if it can't stay alive, it won't be able to heal them. The next card we have is going to be... Hallelujah, which we have in the B category. This card is a four cost rare spell, will heal all allies on the battlefield. It is a big chunk that it can heal on your units. It's a very viable card indeed. There's very little misplay to it in the, that maybe you can accidentally use it and they you're characters will die right before it goes off but if you're using it correctly you can get gain so much value from the heal as you can take a candy bar and put and then heal so that your units can actually push for a second time instead of only being able to push one time and then just being taken out by maybe even just an assassin so the card is is very good uh, it's just not higher up because there's other cards spells that are better in the mystical theme just a very good card indeed we have hercules clyde which is in the c minus category he is a rare fighter three cost his ability is that a war cry that runs and hits the nearest enemy with a magical force that stops their charge he is basically what is called a, a body for a power bind he makes it to where your opponents cannot use their charge abilities. It negates it, and he does a little bit of damage. I think that he is more viable than the uh, cards in the D, E, and F category, uh, just simply because he has 
He has an ability that can do a difference, and he's only three cost to just get an extra body on the field. So I think he's not that bad. He just doesn't have a huge amount of health or attack to scale into the late game since he is a rare card. Um, but he does he does, he does very well, I think, uh, for what he is and his purpose. So he hits at C minus, right? So let's go ahead and go on to the next. We have Hermes Kenny in the B category. He is a three cost epic assassin with a death wish double energy gained for two seconds. This is a pretty big difference as the three cost is almost negated if you are using him in the last minute or the sudden death and it's come oh, it's like 0.18 i think uh cost maybe even lower if you have him out at the same time as you have energy staff out so but he does rely on the energy staff to become more efficient however being an epic card and having high attack and high uh health for a Assassin card. He is very good. He he does better than choir boy just because he can combo And even just by himself gaining more energy value than choir boy himself uh, This card ends in the B category right above the choir boy butters Up next we have imp tweak who is gonna be in the B category as well. He is a epic fighter Five, it's not a five cost. He is a four cost unit. Make sure you see this four cost with a flying ability and his war cry. You can't see it here. Uh, let me try to figure out how I can do this here. Flying war cry swap places with one random enemy. So his ability, I could just have said it, of course, but I don't know why it moved it all the way down there. His ability is very good, and uh, his his stats, his health, and his attack is really good, and the fact that he's flying makes it really hard for your opponent to be able to deal with this card. He doesn't rely on anything whatsoever to be able to do his job. If your opponent has only one card on the field, you're guaranteed that you're going to hit your target with M Tweak. So he's... His value can be easily obtained. Your opponent can put something down and it can randomly be, you know, chosen. So he does have that limit of randomness. He uh, did get a whole bunch of bug fixes. His problem is also that there's probably still a hundred more bugs uh, under the rug somewhere for Imp Tweak one day for us to see, no doubt about it. Currently, you can actually buff Imp Tweak with Bradley. And he can be a longer ranged fighter. He can be a, a ranged fighter, which is insane. I don't know if they're going to fix that, but he has very good stats. He has a very good strategy card. You know, it's something that people cannot really expect and be able to deal with easily because it's a ranged units have to be able to deal with them or spells or AoE of some sort, you know. Yeah, he is a, a very good card indeed. So the next card we're going to be going over is going to be the legendary Master Ninju, who is in the A category. He is a legendary four-cost ranged unit with a war cry. If we can get it set here, yep. Uh, with plus 35 to all other allies, his ability is game-changing. If you have multiple units across on the field and you can you can gain so much more value from this card He just can't do anything necessarily on his own Obviously if he goes on the field by himself Nobody is going to be getting a buff so he does rely on other cards But this is one of those weird cards that it's so good But it can't hit the S category simply because it does require other cards to exist you have to have uh, but on your opponent can use purify on it which is not very common uh, to get rid of the stats I mean people will do it but it's not very common uh, so overall the card can 
get its value out almost definitely, but it's dependent on the user and the timing that you use it in, right? So this card it has very good health, very good attack, and can, like I said, it can buff up your allies attack by humongous amounts uh, always better to buff up ranged units over fighters but you know, regardless buffing up units is going to make a huge difference in your fights alrighty up next we have the legendary Medusa Bebe which is a four cost ranged unit she is in the S category. She is an absolutely outstanding card. When Medusa Bebe kills an enemy, turn that enemy into a snake that belongs to you. So she has a transmorgification upon death on hit effect. So she is very good at countering cards, all, like all of the assassin cards that have death wishes, and pretty much the majority of them. And, uh,. And cards like uh, Cyborg Kenny, wait, the same Death Wish, right? Uh, I'm trying to say Officer Barb Brady, there we go, is one of the cards that she can also counter. Uh, she has a very good health and a very good damage. She's legendary, so she scales way into the late game. She doesn't rely on any other cards for support. She can literally win games by herself, so she is easily put into the S category. Which, by the way, we have it fixed now, so the cards do not show up underneath the next cards. I don't know why I had it set backwards, but I've got it fixed now. Yay! So up next we have Pope Timmy! He is going to be a 6 cost re uh, epic ranged unit with a war cry. Revive the last dead ally. This card is in the A category. It is not in the S category only because he can be instant killed before he can spawn and spawn the unit before him, gaining either two energy advantage with Lightning Bolt, one energy advantage with Unholy Combustion Transmorphication, or he can spawn onto the field and be hit with Cock Magic, which is still a, which with his spawn and would still be a plus one advantage. So there is so many ways to counter Pope Timmy that he cannot be in the A category. He also has a ton of glitches that can happen with him that potentially can negate the card that you're going to spawn. He has had a bunch of bugs fixed for him, but he still can be a little bit unreliable. However, the majority of the time he's going to work the way he's supposed to, which is that he will revive the last dead card. Remember, this is... The last card that finished its death animation. Not that it died, but that it finished its death animation and then it disappeared off the screen. Now, if currently, I'm pretty sure this is how it works. If somebody uses Cock Magic on a card and you go to Pope Timmy, whatever was the last card that you put down on the field is going to be the card that Pope Timmy revives. That's how it should be, but it changes all the time so not for sure but this card is very much a class he has good health and good attack as well he has had some nerfs in the past but he was buffed where he used to have seven cost energy but now he's a six cost he's been it for a long time of course very good card if used correctly uh it can absolutely just steamroll your opponent with the energy value that you can get from this card bringing back grand wizard cartman man bear pig etc of course he relies on other uh, one other card to die at the right time but that's mostly on his his self for his own timing a category no doubt about it so the next card we're gonna have is gonna be poseidon stan a common fighter three cost he is going to be the only f card in the mystic theme, his charged ability slows all enemies for six seconds. His animation is slow, and his time that he slows down units is not long enough. And his stats do not scale into the late game at all, being a common card. 
So the card overall, compared to any of the other stands, is lacking in anything that you can use to to go late game into South Park Bone Destroyer. So the card just doesn't cut it whatsoever. Gonna sit in the F category. Up next we have Powerbind, which is gonna be in the A category. This card is a two cost spell and it stops the enemies in the area from charging for 40 seconds. It's a little bit longer the more you level it up, I think, but not by very much. This card is very good in negating anything on the field, but the two, three, maybe four cards, like three cards specifically that you would want to target with this would be Stan of Many Moons, Mecha Timmy, and, you know... Mm, some, something else I can't think. Maybe those two are like... And Witch Doctor Token. That's the other one. Witch Doctor Token, Mecha Timmy, and Stand of Many Moons are all viable targets for this card. But it can actually be used if there is like a group of units that have charged abilities. If you can hit more than one unit, you can gain value from Power Bind without having to hit a critical target card. The only reason why the card isn't higher on the list is because it doesn't actually remove the cards. And so, eventually, if you were to uh, power bind Mecha Timmy or Grand Wizard Cartman, there is a chance that their ability will come back in time for them to still be able to use it to change the, 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 uh, the battlefield. And then power bind's ability was pretty much negated the whole time. But it is a very strong card for only two energy. It, it does its job very well. Obviously, it doesn't require any other cards to do its job either. And we have Priest Maxi as our next card. We have him in the B category. He is a six cost rare. Uh, this is why does it say rare? No, it is a six cost common card. Make sure you know this common card, okay? Tank unit. And he has an aura, region, nearby, allies. And then when he gets enraged, which is when he hits half of his health, he can add an additional two times regeneration. Now, if he, he doesn't heal himself, he has a really big aura around him. But if he does get healed after he enrages, he will enrage again. And he will be able to heal even more than before. Uh, this card... Even though it's a common card, this card's value is very high. He has so much health, he has okay attack, but he has so much health. And the fact that he's a six cost card makes it to where he is a target for unholy combustion, transmogrification, you know, your removal cards. So since he earns that value to be hit by these cards, he can take that away from your opponent and allow you to play another card safer he doesn't go higher on the list simply because he does require you to play with a lot of support and pope timmy is very necessary you probably don't need to run him but i would say it's very necessary to run a pope timmy with him so you're limited by uh that kind of uh play style also the other way, otherwise, this card does very good. He does very good in challenge mode also. It's a common card, right? So even though he's not an epic or legendary, he does scale pretty good as a common card. And like I said, the six cost makes it to where he's a target for a spell removal. So up next is going to be the one, the only, Prophet Dougie. He is a four cost assassin rare unit. He is a headhunter. If he hits the enemy leader, Paul's enemy's energy regeneration, which is probably for like half a second. I don't really know who really does know about this card. I'm not quite sure. He does work effectively. That's why he's so high on the list since he is a Dougie. And the thing about winning games is all in the heat of a moment. And the time it takes for a Dougie to hit a new kid is just too low of a time that the counter chance is low however unlike his Dougie brothers his ability is very almost insignificant very useless 
compared to the other ones. So he's uh, not able to do anything extra, and it that means it requires him to hit multiple times, and he's less likely to be able to protect himself. So he requires more support than the other Duggies. So he actually still hits it in the C plus category with Carboy Butters, but Hermes Kenny still being the better assassin in the Mystic theme. No doubt about it. Up next we have Purify, which is going to be in the B category with Hallelujah. This card could probably be in the A category, but we've tr we've tried to make some differentiations between the character cards here. And in my opinion, I think that Power Bind is better than Purify. It clears all effects in, an, in a target area. This card can get rid of all uh, poison, all of the mind control. It can get rid of buffs from Master Ninju or nerfs or debuffs, I mean to say. The card is very good and does its job very well for two costs. It's a card that's very good to support other units like Stand of Many Moons or Dougie who are susceptible to being mind controlled. So he's a, it's a very good support card for other units that can pull very hard for their team. The card just doesn't have a huge bang on the field and, and not very many people are running poison or AQR as much as they used to. So the card isn't as strong as it used to be. Uh, that, but it's still very good. That's why it's in the B category. It still it does its job very well. We have up next is going to be the regeneration, which is going to be in the C plus category. It is a three cost rare spell card. Regenerate health on all allies for a certain amount of time. It says ten seconds. I I don't think the time changes, but it does scale on how much it heals. I put this in the C plus category because I do think that Hallelujah has a much bigger uh, bang for your buck that extra one extra energy because regeneration may be able to help you get a bar in a sneaky way but the hallelujah is going to allow you to get an extra bar in a in a positive way i guess you could say uh it, it can be favored very well when you're combining it with priest maxi and any other enraged units potentially it's still a very good card, but compared to Hallelujah or Powerbind or Purified, the card isn't as good. So that's why it's in the C plus category. It could easily belong in a B in the B category, but we're again we're trying to differentiate between these spell cards here. Up next we have Scout Ike, which is gonna be in the E category. Surprisingly not in the F category, I dare say. The reason why he's a three cost assassin with a charged ability. You can gain one extra energy. His problem, before we talk about anything, is the reason why he's in the E category is because he's a common assassin, so he does not scale way, uh, well into the late game. He actually walks really fast, so his ability is hard to get off a second time, and his attack is slow, very similar to Canadian Knight Ike, like he has to kind of set up his hit. So by being slower attack and having lower stats, all other assassins can instantly one-hit KO this character. If not, other fighter cards can one-hit KO him very easily. Uh, he doesn't end up in the F category simply because he probably almost guaranteed can get the energy charge off one time if used correctly. So he would actually just be a two-cost common card. It, otherwise, if it was less, even less likely, because he does walk fast, if he was less likely to get his ability off, he would be in the F category. And maybe, in, in a miracle state here, he can get his second charge off and be a one-cost assassin. But his stats still don't make up the difference for the chance that you're taking. He is in the E category. So we have next is going to be Sexy Nun Randy, which I decided to put into the C plus category. The reason why is simply that Priest Maxi does a much better job overall for the energy cost. He is a five cost epic 
fighter with a charged ability brings a choir boy to the battle. Now his assassin that he spawns is very good. It is it is a very strong spawn card and if left unchecked can be devastating to your opponent's push. This card could easily be in the B category, but the reason why he is not is because he's less likely to be a target for unholy combustion. He has a lower amount of health considerably, so he can be taken out of a battlefield very quickly uh, compared to Father Maxi. So Father Maxi overall can perform, outperform Sexy Nun Randy in a lot of situations and, and be a, more of a target. But Sexy Run, Nun Randy should not be underestimated. Even if he's in the C plus category, he very well could be a B category card we're just trying again trying to make a different different differentiate between cards okay so the the five cost is good i mean it makes it to where he's an even value against unholy combustion he has a good attack and he has good he has okay health i don't want to mean to say he has good health he has okay health right but he again he can be taken out very easily and his uh the other Randys outperform him also. So he is in the B category. We have up next is going to be the Unholy Combustion, which is going to be our A category spell right along with Powerbind. It is a 5 cost rare spell with a kill an enemy and deal damage to its surrounding enemies. This card can do direct damage to the new kid you can actually target a card next to the new kid and it will blow up the unit and hit the new kid so you're doing some chip damage potential which is pretty big for this card um the splash damage versus other units near your target not very important it can come in handy sometimes uh the main issue with this card is actually it doesn't have a very specific targeting like uh, lightning bolt or transmogrification it has a really big circle and the way that it targets is the closest unit to the center of the target targeting is the one that's going to get hit so your opponent potentially can uh, put a unit closer to the center where you're aiming and you can miss your target very easily you can also hit the ground and hit no units whatsoever so there is no like safety switch for this card uh but it is very good it does its job very well for five cost instantly killing a card taking him out of the battlefield very efficient very viable indeed we're gonna leave him in the a category so up next is gonna be witch doctor token aka witch doctor broken he is in the a category a legendary four cost fighter with a charged ability drains health from nearby uh, enemies this ability is op because the unit doesn't even have to have the amount of health that witch doctor token gets it can be a little rat with no health at all and he will charge himself up half health uh, his area of effect is pretty big around him the timing is not too long the only reason why he's not in the s category is because he's a charged ability it can be easily negated and then a uh, lightning bolt or a dwarf king clyde or something like that or a uh, dragon slayer red can negate the amount of damage he has can do because he's based on the amount of health he can take which is the amount of health that he has in total divided by two uh, but his attack and his health is very good scales into the late game very well very strong card it just has the weaknesses of power bind and removal cards it's a definitely a card people want to get rid of you know what i'm saying but does its job very well doesn't even need any support whatsoever no doubt about it up next it's gonna be Ute Pastor Craig, we have him in the C plus category. He is a rare ranged three cost unit. This card could easily be higher on the list for its ability. The Warcry, when the microphone hits, prevents 
the enemy new kid from casting spells for 30 seconds, which is huge, mainly for Stan of Many Moon decks, but you can also use Pope Timmy decks or uh, just any really big cost. His stats are not very good. They're okay. Like, they're okay for a rare ranged unit, but they're not, like, scaling into the late game. His pure reason for existing is his war cry and his war cry is very strong his war cry is very strong but the body is very weak so he ends up in the c plus category not for every deck but very viable very viable across the the world the thing is again to remember the higher a card is on the list the more the card is usable in a variety of decks and more sustainable in its own gameplay and the final card is gonna be zen cartman who we have in the s category he is a tank three cost with a charged ability attracts nearby enemies namaste this card is critical for the mystical success as it for three cost the health is just substantially higher than any other card even five cost energy cost cards do not have as much health as Zen Cartman. He has a ton of health and the, the taunt ability allows you to play other units and right before they're about to die Zen Cartman is going to save them and allow you to gain energy to do any healing shenanigans or uh, anything of that sort to be able to finish the fight Zen Cartman can steal hits away from headhunters, from flying units, from uh, he can stall the game out by being out on the field, and he's a very good cycling card. If you're having a fight in the middle, midline of the battlefield, and you're just rotating through your three cost units over and over again, he is going to pop up on that list over and over, at least twice during those kind of situations, and he's going to gain the value because he, he supports ranged units, and ranged units overall are going to end up winning the fight in the long run. And that health that he brings to that midline fight of, of a cycle battle, he does outstanding. He does not need any help whatsoever. And he doesn't even do any damage. This guy doesn't do any damage at all. He just hangs out on the battlefield chilling. And yet he is the S class right there with Medusa Bebe. So that is gonna be the list. And checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. That's right. So you know, I'm sure it's a little bit controversial with 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 the uh, sexy nun Randy being a little bit lower, but it is because you are comparing these this card to Priest Maxi, and then even higher, you're comparing that card in the same linear thought which dr token just going to be that much stronger so even if a card is able to be in the s category he has to compete with other cards in the theme to be higher and again every card is gauged on how well it can do by itself without as much support and how viable it is in more people's decks and this is my opinion guys I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to bring a towel. Peace out. You want to know how I got these scars? Shut up, Mimsy! Yeah. <laughs>